What's up Tube Tube? Welcome to Low Guido's Chop Shop, second best job blaster channel on the tubes. And the other day, a little while back, I did a review on the Safari Zuma M4 adapter. HPA tapped M4 adapter and in the comments everyone was all like Stormbreaker! Stormbreaker! So here it is. The Stormbreaker. Now what I intend to do here is just take a look at the two of them side by side and look at the pros and cons of both of these devices. Let's get into it. First things first. I mean, one of the one of the most obvious things that I can see is the size. The Stormbreaker is a big boy, and I guess that is to be expected because it is carrying a 7.4 volt battery inside here, um, and that is because it runs off standard mags, not shaker mags. The uh, Safari Zuma requires the use of a shaker mag, which is one of these, which has a little shaking motor inside it that primes itself, whereas the Stormbreaker you can use just a normal standard uh, Gen 8 style mag with the mag terminals on top. Because it's got a battery in there, it has mag terminals inside there, and that will prime your mag and the benefit of that is if you've already got mags and hey I've got heaps of Gen 8 mags if you've already got mags you should be able to put them straight in here whereas the Safari Zuma requires the use of a shaker mag so that can be that can be a um, you know a, a big deal for, for people if they want to use their own mags um, that they've already got then the Poseidon can definitely look like a good thing to get. The uh, Safari Zuma is nice and compact, doesn't have that electronic terminals inside it or battery or anything inside it so um, it weighs a bit less. Actually let's weigh them, let's weigh them side by side. Okay so I've got a scale here Stormbreaker comes in 604 grams. Safari Zuma comes in 437 grams. But you gotta have the shaker mag. So with the shaker mag comes to 632. And of course with the um, Stormbreaker you gotta have your other nylon gen 8 mag or whatever 733 grams now of course with the stormbreaker you've got the choice of using any other mag so you could use potentially a heavier mag or a lighter mag um, depending on your choice because you've got that choice now while, while we're comparing them side by side let's have a look at the length with the mags inserted because because the, uh, <laughs> the Stormbreaker is a big boy the Stormbreaker definitely is a lot longer and um, you know this comes into play when you are you know, when you are playing the game and you've got this hanging off the bottom of your blaster, you know, you want to take all these things in consideration. Uh, you might find it more comfortable having one over the other. The Stormbreaker has a little um, nylon hose with a press fit connection on the end of it, whereas the Zoom has got a uh, this one's got a brass male to male and then a female uh, fosters, I believe it's called a fosters fitting uh, or a foster fitting. Uh, you, can, you could get a male foster fitting and connect it directly into this because this is a, um, I think I believe it's a one-eighth 
uh, pipe thread. It's a tapered thread. So uh, if you have a male one of these, you can connect it into that. On the other hand, if you do also like the nylon, some people say they like the nylon because like, if they were to drop this, the, the nylon gives a bit of flex, whereas, whereas this won't flex, so it could potentially break. Um, you have the option of, of putting a nylon tail on there because it's, it's just a pipe thread. You can get the, the nylon, this little adapter there, and screw that in there, and then you could have a nylon pigtail if that's what you want. Uh, personally, I prefer the solid one. Um, I think I'd probably prefer just a male foster connection directly into the base, which uh, incidentally is what my Glock version of this has, but that's another story. Um, but yeah, that can be done. Uh, I'm not sure why this was done with a male-to-male -male adapter. Maybe convenience, maybe whatever adapters were in stock at the time. Um, the mag release on the Zuma is quite nice, as is the mag release on the Poseidon. Now, the Poseidon, or the Stormbreaker, Poseidon, doesn't have as big a flare as, as the Safari Zuma. So the Safari Zuma's actually got quite a nice flare, so that when you are quickly changing mags, even if you, you know, get it a little bit wrong or a little bit out of whack, you can still slam it up in there and it will kind of eventually get there. The Stormbreaker has a mild chamfer on it. Um, it's you still got to be a bit more precise with it so your um, quick changes might not be as quick. You have to just spend a bit more time making sure it's precise. So that's worth considering as well. Um, aside from that, they're actually two completely different systems. Uh, the shaker mag obviously works on uh, impact and vibration, so when I tap on that it will run the, the, the feed motor until the pressure is, is enough to stop it from feeding. Now the way the Stormbreaker works. The Stormbreaker is actually has a small electronic circuit in here with a microphone on the back here. And the microphone is actually what feeds it. So it picks up a noise and then that feeds it. So if I blow into the microphone, I've, I've been told that uh, the, the correct way to prime these is to hook the, the mag up and then blow into the mic, but it's not feeding, why is it? Um, Alright, so the Stormbreaker is not feeding when I blow on it, so it could well be that the battery needs to be charged. Um, so let's take the battery out and have a look inside. Uh, it is a, a T6 Torx bit to get to the battery, and then there is a very small Tenergy Nanotech inside there. Now, um, this has been supplied to me, this um, Poseidon, uh, from a friend. So I'm just borrowing it and um, I don't know if this little Nanotech is, is, is what actually comes in it or whether that's one that he's put in there himself, but there is a nanotech in there, so let's just assume that's what comes with it. Alright, while we're waiting for that battery to charge, let's just have a peek inside here because I can see there's a piece of black vinyl stuck to the back of this, and I can't not have a look. Just want to have a peek what's going on in here. Okay, so it looks like in behind here, there's the battery wires, there's some hot glue, and then there's the little circuit there that um, runs the the mag priming. Um, 
don't know if you can see it, but it's got... Looks like it's got... Um, some specs written on it. Let me just see if I can read what it says. Alright, can we read that? What do we got? So it looks like it can run on a couple of different voltages. S2 and S3. Hmm. Interesting. Very small circuit, there's not much to it. Um, I, I guess all it is is a little microphone in here. And there is an adjustment here. A little adjustable resistor. So I guess you can adjust the sensitivity of it. Um, and it's just when the microphone picks up noise, it primes the mag. I, yeah, that's what it looks like. 3D printed mag terminal plate there. And it looks like this whole this whole aluminium this is aluminium. This whole aluminium piece is a is a clamshell. So it's uh got a bunch of screws here that hold the two halves of it together. Alright now that the battery has finished charging. Pop it back in. It is a pretty specific little battery. Um, that you need to get to fit in that spot as well. Um, I had a look around, I couldn't find many of them available, at least not locally anyway. So, keep that in mind as well. Alright, so, now that we've got the battery charged up, Uh, can you hear that? I'll bring it, bring it closer to the mic. So when I blow on it, uh, it primes, which is an interesting concept working off of sound. Um, I wonder how loud it has to be. It's obviously got to be quite loud because just clapping next to it doesn't doesn't set it off. Blowing directly into the microphone sets it off. Even tapping around the area of the microphone doesn't set it off. But blowing in it does. That's interesting. So it's a it's, it's a, a very uh, desensitized microphone because yeah, it doesn't go off from just any noise. I wonder I couldn't hear if that went off. <laughs> it interests, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I've obviously put a lot of thought into that. Uh, I'd be concerned that other noises externally, other than your blaster, might actually set it off. But, I couldn't see it being set off then, so when I fly the blaster right next to it but it would have to work when the blaster's in it yeah interesting interesting it's an interesting concept and I um, guess we'll check it out and see how it works uh, so when I tested the Safari Zuma adapter I um, had some gameplay 
footage of the test and that footage I might put in a link up there for you to check out or you can yeah yeah check out the whole video of that because that's worth watching as well um, for the Stormbreaker I've got a different idea in mind um, uh, I have a human and essentially he's going to play Dance Dance Revolution but anytime he misses a step I'm gonna pull the trigger on the Stormbreaker and it is paired with the um, Orion 2 the Poseidon Orion 2 um, so that may be in his favor but um, let's, uh, let's test this out and see how it goes. This should be fun. Alright, here we go. Every time he misses, he gets clapped. F here we go. Okay, that was hilariously fun, and um, I gotta admit, uh, even though I have not been a fan of the Orion um, pistol, the Stormbreaker adapter actually makes it viable. I the only time I've been able to get it to be any sort of uh, useful is when it's been paired with the Stormbreaker. I, I just haven't had good luck with it um, in, in, in its normal form. But with the Stormbreaker, it's, it's a different thing. The Stormbreaker actually feeds quite nicely with um, uh, Black Bag AKAs, is what I was using. Feeds quite nicely. The, uh, the system with the microphone works, and it actually seems to be a lot more sensitive than I first thought. Because um, it does, uh, it does feed when you like when you when you rack the slide or when you tap the side of it, or it it, it seems to be feeding, you know, when it needs to feed. And and if you listen carefully during the clip where I was testing it, you can actually hear the the wheel every now and then going zh, 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 when it's feeding. So um, the yeah the microphone thing was actually a lot more sensitive than than I first expected. I. When I, when I was initially playing with it, um, it didn't seem to be that sensitive. But when, when I was actually using it, it, the sensitivity seemed to be absolutely fine. And I mean, uh, shaker mags, when 
and you just tap on them, they go. Um, the Stormbreaker was uh, not quite as sensitive in in that manner, but it was sensitive enough to get the job done. It it, it fed. In fact, if anything, I think the Stormbreaker is the only saving grace for that Orion pistol, in my opinion. The weird angle that this this tube comes out, just it, it seems to work when you're gripping it. It um, seems that the, the hose just runs down like parallel to your arm there, so that works. I should note that the, the this this is this has been modified uh, because the standard Stormbreaker has a 90 degree plastic fitting on that 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 did break. Um, so this this actually comes straight out now. It used to have a plastic fitting. It's been replaced with a metal fitting, and uh, it's it's not as odd as it as it appears when you look at it. You think that's kind of odd angle, but it actually works quite well. When when it comes down to it, what's which one's better between the two of them? I'd say they both have their own pros and cons. Obviously, the big pro with the Stormbreaker is standard Gen 8 Max. That's the big pro. You can use standard Gen 8 Max. Everyone's got a million of these kicking around, and you can just chuck it in there. Um, however, the downsides to it, it's a lot bigger and chunkier than the Safari Zuma version. Uh, it does have to have a battery inside it. The battery is odd and hard to find. Uh, for the Safari Zuma one as well, um, the advantages are that you can change the top of this to be Kappa or Glock. Um, I do have a Glock plate that goes on this uh, as well. And the disadvantage is you have to buy shaker mags. So um, I think they both serve a purpose quite well, but I guess what suits you uh, might not suit someone else. Uh, it comes down to preference, I think. Um, even though the, the Stormbreaker is like larger hold on let me zoom out a bit even though the Stormbreaker is like significantly larger uh, than the Safari Zuma I didn't feel like it was too awkward to to hold and to use so um, yeah I guess you can get over that I did actually find that the the, the Safari Zuma uh, is easier to reload the mag. The, the magwell flare is, is a bit nicer. The Stormbreaker one, uh, you have to be a bit more precise. But both perform in the manner prescribed. It's interesting that they're, they're two completely different situations uh, that end with the same result. This has got an audio built-in type arrangement, this has got a shaker mag arrangement and two different styles but they both get the job done and I gotta say the Stormbreaker really uh, hasn't really changed my opinion on, on, on the Orion but it certainly has um, made it more viable in my eyes like, like I at first thought that I would never want to have one but with the Stormbreaker it just seems to work. I don't know whether whether that mag that I have is just scuffed or what but the Stormbreaker and it's the AKA gels it seems to work quite well and um, I think the human can attest to the fact that it does the job. Although um, he did say he didn't get hit every single every single time that may well have been also me uh, not just not hitting him, not aiming. Um, but it seemed to, I didn't seem to, to see any major feeding issues. It seemed to feed quite well all the time. I didn't have any jams that I had to clear. Um, yeah, again, like, like I said, 
two different ways of achieving the same result. I think it comes down to a personal opinion. Um, if you were to ask my personal opinion, I prefer the Safari Zuma just because it's a bit more compact and because it's got the, the adapters for the pistols that I like to use. Um, I know there is a Kappa version of the Stormbreaker, but that's not the one I have, so I can't really compare that. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and if you uh, like what I'm doing here, you can support my channel by buying a patch from my face page, Lo Guido's Chopters, or you can also um, uh, buy me a coffee. Shout outs to those people who have bought me a coffee. There was one person who bought me a coffee who was anonymous, um, so I can't shout out that person because I don't know who they are. Uh, also shout outs to Adam Hoy and shout outs to Rebecca Kelly, all legends who have bought me a coffee. Um, and as thanks for buying me a coffee, you also get to view the videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace.